if a customer is wanting that last little bit of power, the Bosch ECUs are really very adaptable and they're high performance ECUs. So under wide open throttle, they're going to give you the fuel and the ignition timing that you want to create power. The later ECUs are more adaptable than the early ECUs, but all of them are set up fairly aggressively. So for instance, on a ME 7.8.1 ECU from a 997 or a 987, if we really spend a lot of time on a 4.1 liter, I think my initial awakening was when I spent eight hours on a chassis dyno with an engine dialing in every last number. It was dial in the fueling, dial in the ignition timing, dial in the cams, uh, the cam advancement, and then also dialing in when we're opening the and closing the resonance flap on the intake, and then rinse and repeat. And so, you know, when we'd adjust one, we'd have an opportunity to adjust another and get a little more power. And, you know, it was a eight hour iterative process. And, you know, we gained about six or seven horsepower for the effort. And, you know, it's a testament to how good the, uh, the Porsche ECUs really are. And so a lot of times we'll see claims from, you know, tuners about how much they're, you know, how much added power they're going to give based on this tune or that tune. But since we see all the tunes that are coming in from our customers and, you know, they either tell us who tuned it or we've gotten pretty good at recognizing the different tunes. Typically what we see is one, they'll adjust the ignition timing under wide open throttle up a little bit. You know, typically that means they're banging off the uh, knock sensors and just relying more on the knock sensors to adapt the ignition timing. And two, they'll actually put more tip in in the throttle. And so that's kind of like a sprint booster to where, you know, if you give it 5% throttle, the ECU interprets that as 20% throttle. And so you give it a little bit and it, it really pushes, where, whoa, man, this thing, this thing's really moving now, right? And it gives the impression that the tune has really made a difference when, when actuality, it's just remapping of the throttle pedal. And there's not an, a lot of additional gain that's, that's to be had there. And um, we've even had uh, customers send us before and after dyno sheets from their tunes and saying, what gives? What? Why isn't this working? Not not on our engines, but on previous engines that they've had just for us to kind of take a look for them. And, you know, we've looked into it. Once again, it was mostly throttle remapping and very little actual uh, useful remapping of the ECU. Should I go into the differences between the ECUs? I think they would love to hear that. Okay. The other interesting thing, or that I find interesting, is the evolution of the ECUs from 99 to 08, where the bulk of our work is done. And so in 99 is the old cable throttle 99C2, where you're actually moving with the gas pedal, a physical cable that's opening the throttle body. A 99C2 was the first Porsche I fell in love with, and so I've, I've owned quite a few of them of the early 996s. My race car is still a 2000 996C2. And so it's kind of one of those models that's near and dear to my heart. But once the ECUs progress from cable throttle to drive by wire, that opens up a whole new level of adaptability because now the ECU controls both the throttle or the throttle blade or the air that comes into the engine and the amount of fuel or the fuel injector pulse width, the amount of fuel that's inserted into the cylinders. And so now it can start doing load-based calculations for how much air and fuel to provide. So at that point, the pedal becomes a load request. And that's kind of what the drive-by wire is, is you're telling the engine how much load you want and then the engine the, or the ECU then can take that load, perform different calculations, and then apply that to the throttle body and the fuel injectors. Now then, this is also where we start to see closed loop come into play. And so while the ME 7.2 and even the rest of world ME 7.8 for the 997s and 987s, while the narrowband sensors, essentially what that gives is 
air to fuel ratios between 13.5 and 15.5. And so with 14.5 being kind of your target or 14.7 uh, is what's called stoichiometric value of a gasoline. So that's the actual target. And then the readings on the O2 sensors that are prior to going through the cats gives that value to the ECU and then it can make corrections. So if you change a, essentially change an intake modification or do something to that effect, it's going to see whether it improves it or makes it worse. It's going to see that at those O2 sensors and then make the necessary corrections to hit its target uh, lambda or AFR values. Uh, it has both a short-term trim and a long-term trim that it allows that adaptability with one exception. The ME 7.2 ECU does not do closed loop fueling at wide open throttle. And so under your max power where you really need it adapting the most, that model of ECU up through the 996.2 does not have that capability. So at that point, we do have to make sure that, you know, any type of changes made are to the intakes or the throttle or whatnot, that we pay attention to that when we are doing our, our drive testing and to make sure that that's, you know, working properly or if we need to make a few little tweaks or adjustments, we can. When we get to the ME 7.8 ECUs, especially with the wideband uh, Lambda sensors, which give us, I think, down to maybe 10 all the way up to, you know, we see it as high as we want to go, 17, 18, 19 AFR. Now we can see exactly what's happening. And the reason the air fuel ratio, if you think about it, the best way to think of an engine is an air pump. And so the more air we're pumping through the engine, the more power we're getting out of it. And the amount of fuel is what obviously controls the combustion process along with when the ignition fires or the ignition timing. But of all of that, the result is the air to fuel ratio. So if I know what the result is of that combustion process, then I can adapt my fueling, you know, me being an ECU, I can adapt the fueling or the air or the spark timing to make sure I'm getting that expected output. And so really the, the ME 7.8s are very nice from that standpoint in that they have full adaptability and they know what's happening, they know what the output is, and they can adjust short-term trims, long-term trims. They can do closed loop fueling adjustments at wide open throttle, and uh, they operate off of essentially an efficiency curve that we can see inside of the ECUs and based on where in that efficiency curve it is, is how it picks what to use. The other interesting thing about that ECU is that it actually has two optimum timing maps for the ignition timing. And then it's got four maps that it moves between based on the efficiency that it uses to guide it. And so that's where on that day where I was trying to dial in the ECU to the max best combo for that engine, for that setup, for that day, for, you know, on that dyno. Uh, that's why there wasn't much left to be had because the ECUs are really good on the 987s and 997s at adapting to whatever conditions you give it and getting the best performance out of them.